Hey guys, it's uh, Steve here from Nostalgia. Sorry about the little break uh, in between videos. Uh, we just had a lot going on in our uh, in our day-to-day -day lives. So uh, I'm back here with the next installment for the Buy Station video series. Uh, in this video, we're going to focus on how to um, set up your push button, your your power button, to get that uh, nice power button on top of your system. Um, working uh, benefits of the power button uh, and the specific code uh, that we're going to be putting in and the script that we're putting in is that um, if you have a Raspberry Pi and you power it down incorrectly um, or in the middle of a read write session specifically, you can actually um, corrupt your SD card. And that's not the end of the world. You'll have to you'll have to reformat your SD card. You'll have to start over from scratch. If you don't have a backup of the, the image that you've got on your current SD card, you're essentially rebuilding it from scratch. So that can be a little bit of a pain. Um, this power button will prevent you from having that issue. It's a very specific script that actually exits every single thing that you're doing. It'll slowly back out one, af one after another of any of the software. It'll wait till the read-write process is done, and it'll boot it down and shut it down properly, which will which will uh, save you a lot of headache later on. So for this, you don't need much. Um, what you need is the Raspberry Pi that you're working with. Uh, I use this type of push button. I'll put it up on screen right now. It's just a, a single push momentary it's called a clicky push button. Uh, it's 12 millimeters in diameter. And the reason I use this guy is it is relatively small and it happens to uh, to fit the case really nicely. It's, it's a low profile, so it doesn't have a huge depth behind the button, which is what you need because these cases are so small. They're about the size of a deck of cards. So um, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit much more than that, especially in the depth. Um, and typically when you're dealing with low profile push buttons, you don't really have super wide push buttons. So it's really helpful just to have something uh, this small when you're dealing with something the size of a deck of cards. Uh, the next thing that I use is this type of wire, and I'll put a picture of it up top as well, up on the screen here. Um, so you'll notice on one end, uh, it has, it almost looks like a, uh, like a female dual pin connector. Uh, that goes into the GPIO pin set on the uh, the Raspberry Pi, and on the other end, you've got two quick connects that will attach to the base of the button. Um, the reason I like to use this is because it's really easy. You don't have to do any soldering. You don't have to mess around with much. You just pop them in. Um, you might have to bend the wires a little bit to make them fit, but it's it's really simple. You just pop them onto the push button, push it into the uh, the Raspberry Pi and the right pins, and you're you're pretty much good to go. So. Uh, let's get into it. What we're going to do is we can do everything right from our desktop computer. We're going to hop onto PuTTY. There it is. And we're just going to type in RetroPie and hit enter. And it should pop up. Beautiful. So our login is Pi and our password is Raspberry as the default. And we are good to go. So um, we're going to go through this step by step. I've already done this on my Raspberry Pi, so it might not take quite as long for me to install everything. Um, but do keep in mind that when you're doing this for the first time, it does take uh, a little bit of time. So uh, if it's slow or it um, seems like it's not actually installing anything, just leave it. It, it, it is, um, and it'll just take a few minutes or longer possibly to, uh, to finish whatever process it's on. Um, but yeah, all we've got to do is uh, follow my lead on this. I'm going to type out the coding on screen here. I'm going to also include it in the uh, description box below, step by step. So step one, two, three, four. So you can literally go down there, copy it and paste it for yourself. Um, I do want to mention that I found this method from another YouTuber. His name is ETA Prime. He is fantastic when it comes to uh, Raspberry Pis. Um, and actually, I mean, a lot of tech stuff. So he's got uh, hundreds of videos on his channel. I highly recommend you check him out. Take a peek to see what he's done. He's got levels and levels above um, above me in terms of the different types of configuration that he's played around with one of the Raspberry Pis. And there's a ton you can do with them. Um, a lot of stuff isn't applicable for my specific purpose when I was building this. But there, there's a, a, a lot of stuff that you can do with these Raspberry Pis and RetroPie. Um, that I don't touch, and he actually has a ton of videos. So I, again, I do recommend you checking him out. But let's get into this. First thing we need to do is sudo apt-get install update. And what this is gonna do is it's just gonna search for an update. If there's an update, it'll install it. For me, I don't have a package to update. I'm, I'm on the latest uh, version here. So 
the next thing that we need to do is sudo apt-get install python-dev. You hit enter. Uh, it's going to look for it. I've already got it installed on here. If you don't, it's going to come up and say, are you sure you want to proceed? You're going to hit the Y button and hit enter. Uh, the next thing here is sudo apt get install python3 python3 dev sorry python3 dash dev and we're going to hit enter same thing is going to happen uh, i've already got it in here but it's going to install it'll take a few minutes for yourself sudo apt get install gcc we're going to hit enter same thing i've already got it um, but there it is next we've got sudo apt get install python dash pip and then we're going to hit enter same thing and we're good so now we go into the next thing and we are going to download a package that has information about the gpio pin so it'll it'll be helpful when we're trying to tell the uh, when we're putting in the script for the push button to tell the Raspberry Pi which pins on the GPIO we want controlled by uh, the push button. So we have to put in wget space https colon forward slash forward slash pypi dot python dot org forward slash packages forward slash source forward slash R, so capital R there, forward slash, capital R, capital P, I, dot G, P, I, O, all in caps, forward slash, capital R, capital P, lowercase I, dot G, P, I, O, dot zero, dot five, dot eleven, uh, dot T, A, R, dot G, Z. So again, I will put this stuff in the description. Uh, I'll also have it up on screen so you can see it a little bit more clearly than trying to read exactly what I'm typing into this command line. Um, and that's it, you're gonna hit enter. Oh, I actually made a mistake. So here, if you can see my green cursor, we're in the last little bit here where it says rpi.gpio.0, it's actually supposed to be dash zero. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that and it should, there it is. So it's found it and it's downloaded. So uh, again, I'm gonna make sure that that's in there so you guys can see it. Um, as you can see that, I mean, anyone can make mistakes. Um, no one's immune to that. So just pay attention to what you're typing and uh, double check what you've written to make sure it is exactly what it's supposed to be. So next we're going to uncompress that package. So we're gonna hit sudo tear space dash z x v f space capital r capital p lowercase i dot g p i o all caps um, dash zero dot five dot eleven dot tear dot g z so i'm just going to verify sudo tear dash z x v f r pi dot g p i o dash zero dot five dot eleven dot tear dot gz hit enter and it does it beautiful so the next thing that we have to do is we've got to move into the newly created directory so we're going to hit cd space r pi which is uh oh sorry r pi just like that capital r capital p i dot g p i o dash zero dot five dot eleven and we're going to hit enter and that should move us into that directory and it does so you can see um, right over here how the rpi.gpo uh, is in blue. That means that we've moved from our home directory into that directory. So the next thing that we actually have to do is uh, we're going to type in the following command. So it is sudo python setup.py install. And it should do that. It's going to install. It'll take a few minutes here. Now that that's done, we're going to type in sudo python3. 
setup dot py install. So I'm just going to move my cursor to make sure I've spelled that correctly. sudo python3 setup dot py install. I'm going to hit enter. Same thing. It's going to run through install that there. Excellent. So now what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a directory that's going to hold the uh, the custom script that we've got. So we have to write mkdir space forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash scripts just like that and we're going to hit enter and it's going to create it. So now that we know that that's there we're going to call our script shutdown.py. Um, and we're going to do that by doing this sudo nano forward slash home slash pi slash script slash shutdown dot py. And we're going to enter into an area here that is actually our. Um, our script. So now we just have to we have to paste the script itself in there. Um, so the script is is fairly long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy it, and I'm just going to go ahead and paste it right in here. So there it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to include that in the description as well, just so that way you guys can see it, um, and you guys could probably copy it and paste it right out of there. Um, in an absolute worst case scenario, I'll, uh, if it's not working the way I want it to, I'll create a uh, text file and I'll post it somewhere with a link to access the text file that'll have all the instructions in it. Um, but yeah, it should, it should work out that way. So now that we've got this in, you have to hit um, your control X to write it. And it'll ask if you want to do that, you're going to hit yes. You're going to keep it as the shutdown.py. You're going to hit enter and that's it there. So the next process here is we are going to reset our pi. So we have to put in sudo reboot. There we go. Sudo reboot. And what that's going to do is it's going to kick me off um, as soon as the Raspberry Pi restarts. There it is. Uh, network error software cause connection abort. That's fine. So we're going to go ahead and exit that and we are actually going to reload our putty. Uh, it just may take a minute before we uh, have our Raspberry Pi fully reboot. So we'll try to log in right now and see if it pops up. Beautiful. So we're already there. What we have to do is we've got to re-log in. So our uh, username is Pi. Our password is Raspberry. I'm going to hit enter. And now the only thing that's really left for us to do is to um, configure our script to run at startups to make sure that that script starts right away as soon as we get our system up and running that script's playable and it's usable. So the first thing that we have to do right from the screen is type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash lo or sorry rc dot local. And it'll take you right into here. So if you recall, let me just make this a little bit bigger. You'll recall that we access this, um, this area here when we put in the information about uh, our background music, which is our line of code right here, sudo python, blah, 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 background music. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and scroll all the way down and we're also going to put in um, an, an additional line of code. So here we're just going to put in sudo python forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash scripts forward slash shutdown dot py. And I just want to make sure that I've got that spelt exactly how I want it to sudo python home pi scripts. Oh, I spelled scripts wrong. Something wasn't looking right. There we go. So scripts slash python or sh scripts slash shutdown dot python or dot py. And then actually we have to add sign. That's it. So now that that is done, all we have to do is hit our control X to save it. We're going to hit Y. We're going to leave the name exactly as it is. Enter. And that's it. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm going to actually before we switch over to that, I've got to show you guys where um, we have to connect these uh, wires onto the GPIO pin. So what I'm going to do is let me log out. I'm done here. So just like that, you can type in exit and it'll close. Um, on screen here, I'm going to have a picture of the GPIO pins. You're going to connect your pins to pin number five and pin number six. So these are the ones right here on screen. I'll see if I can put a little circle or something around them. Um, but that's where your connectors are going to go. And what's going to happen when you push the button is it's going to bridge those two pins. And that's what's going to trigger the shutdown script to happen. So as soon as those two pins get bridged, uh, the shutdown sequence the script will start to run, it'll run through the sequence and it'll it'll power down your Raspberry Pi. So now that I've explained that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the Raspberry Pi um, so you guys can actually see it and I'll show you how the power button works. I'll press the button I'll show you what should come up on screen. So all right guys give me just one second to switch over. All right guys so our uh, retro Pi is now loading up. I've uh, gone ahead and connected those pins to the five and six pin um, layouts on the GPIO as I showed you guys in the earlier uh, portion of this video. Um, I've gone ahead and quick connected to my push button and I'm now currently holding the push button. I've got my board sitting out on the desk here. Um, and as you can see my Raspberry Pi is currently on. I'm just moving around with the uh, uh, the gamepad here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press the push button and it's going to start uh, a power down sequence. So here we go. And you'll see right up on the top it up which should just take a second here. RetroPie is loading up and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you guys I'll go right into the middle of a game um, while it's loading um, and while I'm actually playing and while it's reading off of that SD card uh, I'm going to go ahead and power it down right in the middle of a game and show you guys that it is not an issue. So we're going to go ahead and enter into Super Nintendo and uh, we'll load up Super Mario World and it's going to go ahead and launch. So I'm just going to talk a little bit because the uh, the audio, if the audio plays, I'll end up getting flagged for uh, copyright, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to hit the start button here. Oh, I can, oh I'm using the wrong controller. Um, beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and select that game. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go move around, and as I'm doing that, I'm just going to press the power button. So you'll see how it backs out of the ROM. Guys, that's the power button. I've still got a couple more videos in this series. I'm going to teach you guys how to set up the PlayStation 1 emulator properly, how to switch from um, analog to digital controllers, um, or I guess the, um, the D-pad controllers. If you guys recall, back when the PS1 was first released, it didn't actually have analog and a lot of games were configured not to run with analog, and because of that, certain certain games on the PlayStation, they uh, they don't work um, when you've got an analog controller plugged in. So there's a, there's a setting that you've got to go to to change that. But other than that, that's it for this video. Stay tuned. Um, sorry again about the uh, the wait uh, for this video. If you liked what we've done here, go ahead and uh, give us a thumbs up. Um, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I, uh, I do my best to, to respond to everyone who comments. Clearly, if we get a flood of comments, I, I can't respond to everybody. Um, but I do my absolute best uh, to stay engaged with you guys. So if you have anything at all that you guys have in questions or anything like that, or even uh, if you'd like to see something in the future, if there's a certain feature on uh, the Raspberry Pi that I'm not going to include in this video series, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Uh, but thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, have a great one. Thanks.